So today I want to talk about microcontrollers, how they differ a little bit from regular processors, and I want to go through a specific example that highlights this, basically looking at encryption on a microcontroller in C. Welcome back, my friends. So I was playing around the other day with an example, microcontroller programming example, that was looking at encryption, and I thought it might be a fun one to play around with and to talk about on a video. Today's video is brought to you by all the wonderful people who support this channel through Patreon. For those of you that are new, Patreon is where you can get access to the source code from all my videos, including this one. This one's definitely gonna have some source code. It's also where you can get access to my virtual office hour that I hold once a month, where we talk about, well, whatever you wanna talk about, usually something related to programming, computer computer science or computers. But anyway, a big thanks to all of you who help support this channel. So now back to microcontrollers. Many people think of microcontrollers as simply a smaller, wimpier version of a regular processor, and that's not a terrible model. It's kind of true, but there are some differences. And one of the main differences that you see in in case you're new to microcontrollers, is the number of accelerators, modules, and peripherals that are actually, that are normally separate, but that are actually baked into the microcontroller itself. Because you see, the goal when we're making microcontrollers, the point of a microcontroller is to allow us to make very small, very cheap, inexpensive computers. And in order to do this, we need to use fewer resources. We want fewer chips. We want, we want simple circuit boards that just have fewer components. And so that tends to mean moving components, moving features, moving functionality that normally on your laptop or your desktop might be on a separate chip, separate might you know, you might go over the bus for this thing. Now it's going to get put all together on one chip. And the other thing to keep in mind is that even when we are making really small, low power devices that have wimpy processors, these processors still need to do useful stuff. Specifically, for example, they need to do encryption. We want security. So we want to be able to encrypt our data that we're going to send. And so one of the things you might find baked into your microcontroller is encryption support. And that's the topic that I wanted to talk about today, because that is a feature that this this MSP430 that I'm playing with today, it happens to have a crypto coprocessor on it. And today I wanna to show you how we can use it to do encryption without actually writing any encryption code. Because doing all the encryption in software on this device would be, well, it'd be expensive and it's a really wimpy processor, but it becomes much more manageable when we have hardware support for it. And that hardware support is going to make it faster. It's gonna use less energy. It's gonna take less memory and less code. And those are all really good things. And so today I wanna to show you how this works, but before we get into it too far, let's talk about just basics of encryption. I don't want to go into a lot of details, but I want to give you a rough idea of what we're going to be working with today. So a quick overview of AES for the uninitiated. So I'm going to simplify this a bit, forgive me, but the idea with encryption is that say I have a message M. I want to encode that message using a key K in such a way that it can only be read by other people who have that same key. So this is what we call symmetric key crypto. There are also asymmetric cryptographic algorithms like RSA, DSA, and ECC. Let me know if you'd like me to talk more about crypto and specifically any of these algorithms in future videos. But for now, we're talking about symmetric cryptography and AES. And you can think of AES as a complicated mathematical function that takes a block of bits, that is our message M, and it takes a key, that's some more bits, and it produces a ciphertext C. And this C, this ciphertext, is what I actually am going to send to you and if you have the key K, then you can decrypt the ciphertext and that will give you the original message M. Okay, simple enough. Now let's dive into the code. Now, if this is your first time looking at embedded C code, you might want to check out my previous embedded videos because there are a few things that may look different, like a bunch of direct register writes and reads. You might not be familiar with that. It's not really a big deal, but I'm going to assume that you've seen these things so that we don't have to go all over it again because I've covered it in previous videos. So links down in the description, check those videos out. If if you haven't seen those things. Similarly, I also have a make file that I created here. The make files I use for my embedded programming is, a, they're a little more complicated than what you'll see in just like regular C code for my laptop. That's mostly because of how we debug and how we install things. Again, if you haven't seen that, if any of this is confusing, please check out my previous videos. They'll help you out. Okay, so you've been warned. Now let's take a look. So if we jump into this demo program, let me just collapse things a little bit, uh, make things a little bit easier to start out with so we can see kind of the high level view of what this program is doing. Yeah, let's just, okay, we're all collapsed here. We have a couple of functions here. Up here at the top, I have some constants that I've defined. Basically, we're going to do some blinking. We're going to do some periodic stuff. Uh, check 
on my Blink video, but yeah, basically this is just setting the frequency with, with which we're going to do some things. I'm also defining my key length. We're gonna be using a 256 bit AES. I'm also defining a constant that's going to be the number of bytes that are in there because a lot of times in our programs, we work with bytes rather than individual bits. And then also the data blocks that I'm gonna work with, and that is gonna be 16. So our coprocessor actually takes blocks of size 16, so we encrypt 16 bytes at a time. Okay, then down here, we have a few different functions that we're gonna take a look at. So this first one is used to set the key, right? So it tells the processor, it tells the processor, this is the key I wanna use. And then we have this encrypt, AES encrypt and decrypt down here. These basically are going to actually do our encryption and our decryption, but they use a this do cipher function because they both have a lot of things in common. So both encrypt and decrypt are going to use do cipher to actually do their encryption and decryption. And I'll show you all that anyway. We also have this AES reset. Uh, I thought I was gonna need that. I actually ended up not needing it, but that's okay. We'll still talk about it a little bit. So this AES key, let's take a quick look at this. But the way we're gonna interact with this module within our processor is rather than have to create all of this stuff ourselves, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pass in a key, which is gonna be an array, and we know what size it is, it's gonna be 256 bits. And I'm going to have a Boolean that says, am I trying to encrypt with this key or am I trying to decrypt with this key? And the reason that I need this Boolean here is that the module treats the keys differently. So uh, you notice right up here at the top, basically what I'm doing is I'm setting bits in this AES control register. There's this register and I knew how to do this because I checked out the data sheets, the manuals, and had to look up what these were. But there's a register in the processor. And if I set certain bits, I can put it in encrypt mode or decrypt mode. Similarly, then down here, I also set the bits that tell it what key length to work with because this module can actually work with multiple key sizes. So I can use 256, I can use 128. In this case, I want 256, but it would be really easy to change. Then down here, what I'm gonna do is I'm basically going to have a for loop that goes through one byte at a time, and it's going to write those bytes individually into this AESA key register. Now the underscore L just means that we're just writing to the lower eight bits. That's because this module can accept writes in two byte chunks or one byte chunks. And so in this case, I'm writing one byte at a time, but I could do it in two and you're gonna see that later. I'll show you how that's done later in this example. Then once we write all this data in, it's gonna take a little while for the processor to like actually set it all up, I guess. So we have two different ways that we wait to see if it's done. Now, interestingly, I'm not actually sure why TI made it this way, but this processor has different signaling if I'm in encrypt mode or decrypt mode. So in this case, basically, if I'm in encrypt mode, I'm going to wait for this AESA status register to have a particular bit. And when that bit goes to a one, then I know we're done. Same thing over here, only it's a different bit. So we're using the AES busy bit versus this key write bit. And for some reason, they saw fit. It probably makes sense if I look at the actual circuit design. For now, we're just going to use it. We're not going to dive into that. But so this is how we set the key up. So once this while loop, once these while loops are finished, that says, okay, the module in the processor is ready, the key has been loaded. So at this point, then let's look at how we actually do encryption or decryption. Okay, so if we look at these, these two functions are basically identical except for, again, the mode. So we set the modes also in that AES A control register. We set particular bits to set it to encrypt mode or to decrypt mode. And then I'm gonna call this do cipher, okay? And I'm gonna pass in the data. This is the data that we want to encrypt. We're assuming it's 16 bytes long. And this is going to be a pointer to a block of data that's also 16 bytes long and this is going to be our result. This is our encrypted data. So we're going to take the data and we're going to encrypt it and stick it, stick the result into encrypted data. So pretty simple, not too complicated. Let's look at how it's actually done. So up here in do cipher, what we're going to do in here is we're really going to go through, have a for loop that's very similar. In this case, I've written it so that it's writing in two bytes at a time so that you could see the other style for this. We could have done one byte at a time as well. At least that's what I see in the manual. So I'm assuming it's true. I haven't tried it. I wanted to show you both ways. But basically what we're going to do here is we're going to go through and we're going to go through the number of bytes in our data block, but we're increasing by twos, okay? And each time what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a uint 16 underscore t, a temporary variable that's just going to be 16 bits. And I'm gonna combine my two bytes into one 16 bit number. And then I write that to this AESADN, that's AESA, the A module data in. Okay? And again, 
I knew what that register was by checking the user manual for the processor and checking out some of the header files. So then at that point, we start the cipher by basically setting this bit, the AES key WR bit to be one. And then once we do that, we're basically just going to wait for this cipher to finish. So what we're doing is we're basically saying, hey, the data's all in, you already got the key, now go. And then we wait right here until it's finished. We're just waiting again. This is very similar to how we waited for the key to be ready. We're waiting for this, the status register. We're waiting until the busy bit goes to one. And then once it's done, we know that the encryption has been finished and we can actually read the data out. Again, we're gonna read in two byte blocks. And so basically the reverse of what I did up above, and I just take it out of the AES data out register one at a time. We just take two byte blocks. I'm going to use my bitwise operations to basically split these up. Let me know if you want to hear more about bitwise operations. I've talked about them a bit earlier when we talked about bit masks. I can definitely talk more about it in the future if there's interest. But this is basically all we're doing. We're going to take this data out of this register and write it into our result data array. You know, so I'm doing two bytes because we're taking two bytes at a time. But then so we write it into that data. And then when this function returns, basically the resulting data is going to be right here. Okay, so that's really all we're going to use. I do want to come down here and look at the AES reset. This is really simple. All we're doing is writing a bit, a reset bit to the AES A control register. And what that does is it resets the AES hardware. I was thinking early on I might need to do that, but it turns out that I can comment that out and it actually works just fine. So I'll leave you to play around with when you would actually need to use that. But for now, we, we really can ignore that for the purpose of this example. Okay, so now let's get down into the main program. Let's look at some of my different variables. So one is we've got a key. In this case, this isn't the key that you would actually use probably for a real application. It's pretty easy to predict, but it's just a test here. I could pick any bytes I wanted. So I chose to start counting from one all the way up to 0x20, which is 32. I'll let you pick your own key. We also down here have our data. This is the data we're going to encrypt, which I'm taking 15 and counting down to zero. Again, this is just test data. It's stuff that I want to be able to see in my debugger really easily to test to see if it worked. But in reality, this would be some kind of meaningful data. It could be sensor data, it could be a network packet, it could be a message, whatever. And then I'm also going to make two different arrays down here. One is going to be for the encrypted ciphertext. And the other is we're going to encrypt the data. And then I'm going to decrypt it to show you that we get the original back. So that's really important. Anytime you're dealing with encryption, you want to make sure that everything works well, and you can actually get your data back. Because otherwise, well, it's not much use. It's basically data destruction. Okay, so these are basically the, the data entries, the arrays that we're going to be working with. So let's look at what we're doing in main. Okay, in main, basically, we've got some early stuff that you see in most of my programs. This is shutting off the watchdog timer and allowing changes to port registers. If you haven't seen these, I, I talk a little more about them in previous videos, but these just basically set up the processor to work the way that I want it to for now. I'm also going to be blinking some lights. So I set up some pins here. Again, I talk about blinking lights and digital outputs in a previous video, but I'm basically setting these both to outputs and I'm setting one of the lights to high and one to be low. Basically, I'm just gonna blink. I'm gonna do some alternate blinking later on in the program. Okay, so then at this point, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here and just over and over again, I've got an infinite loop and that's because for embedded systems, it's often easiest to do it this way because maybe I won't catch the first time around. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to first just initialize the ciphertext and the decrypted data to something that's definitely not what I'm looking looking for. So all threes and all twos, that's what I'm doing with these memset calls is basically I'm writing all the bytes in ciphertext to three, all the bytes in decrypted text to two, it could be whatever. I'm just trying to initialize that so you can see the difference. And then I'm going to set the key in encrypt mode. And then I'm going to call encrypt on this. So I'm going to encrypt the, the stuff in my data, those numbers counting down, I'm going to encrypt those and store it in the ciphertext. Then I'm going to set the key again, false now for decrypt, same key though, and then we're going to run decrypt on our ciphertext and store it in decrypted data. Now, normally, normal systems, we don't work like this. We typically would encrypt and send it to someone else and the other device would decrypt or the other way around. But in this case, this is a demonstration. So I just want to show you how this works. And then down here, all this is doing is it's going to wait a little while. So it's not happening so fast that we're, you know, that we can't see what's going on. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to test just down here to see if my data, the original data happens to match what I decrypted, which that would tell me that everything worked the way I expect. So if that's the case, so using mem compare here to see if that's the case, if that's the case, then I'm going to blink my lights. So we'll be able to see if this is working, the light should blink. If it's not working, the lights are not going to blink. Okay, so this is our program, pretty straightforward. Let's see if it works. 
So here I'm just going to compile it really quick using my make file. Great, let me make sure to plug in my device here. Okay, we've got it plugged in. Now let's make install crypto demo. And okay, so this is gonna load the code. So it's, it, I compiled it. This is actually loading it on the device. And now you can see, I'll show you really quick. So you can see that the lights are blinking. So that's great. Okay, so, so that's great. You can see that it's blinking. So we're pretty sure that this is actually working, but let's take a look in our debugger just to make sure. So here you probably, maybe you saw it, maybe you didn't in my make file, but I have a, make debug target, which basically automates some of my setting up GDB to work with this particular program. That's fine. So here we've got, it tells me set a breakpoint in main and gets me automatically in here. You can check out some of the stuff it's doing. It basically is using this GDB script right here to set this all up. I talk about how to debug embedded code in GDB in a previous video, so you can check that out definitely, but that's what I'm doing here. Okay, so now that we're in here, let's just come through here and let's let's set a quick breakpoint. I'm gonna set a breakpoint at line 125, so that's right before we're about to encrypt our data, and then we can just continue to there. Okay, so now we're at our set key. Okay, so we got there, great. Now let's encrypt and then we'll set the key again and then we'll decrypt. Now what we're gonna do here is I just wanna look really quick at, let's look first at my data. You can see this is the data that we came up with. It looks a little bit different because it's giving us some of the escape sequences that correspond to those bytes. But the point is, is this is the original data that we were looking at. If we wanna see it in hex, oh, whoops. If we wanna see it in hex, we can do it like this and you can see it, that might be a little easier to look at. So then let's look at the encrypted data. So if we look at our ciphertext, you can see, first of all, this looks nothing like it. We've, we've used AES to hide the data, which is really useful if you don't want someone to know that I'm just counting down from 15 down to one. And then if we come down here and we look at the decrypted data, you'll be able to see that once again, we are back to our original text. So those blinking lights were telling the truth. We were able to encrypt our data and decrypt it. And so this seems to be working, which is great. And I got hardware support for it. So it's very fast. You notice in this code, there is no AES code in here. There's no S boxes. There's no multiple rounds and all the things that you normally would see with an AES encryption cipher. If you want me to go into that at some point, we definitely can. But, but mostly I wanted to point out that this is something, this is just one feature that you often see see in your microcontrollers that can help you out, help keep your code small and your systems working better, even though your processor is pretty wimpy. So I hope that's helpful. I hope you learned something from it. Subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss next week's video. And until then, I'll see you later.